Tuesday's federal budget 2023 had a number of changes and measures that affect both individuals and corporations. Let's take a few minutes and review some of the changes that you'll want to know about. To help lower income Canadians with increasing costs, particularly the cost of food, the budget proposed an increase to the maximum amount of GST credit for January 2023 that we just received, known as the growth free rebate. And eligible individuals are going to get twice the amount that received in January that we paid as soon as possible once the legislation has passed. So this maximum additional amount will be $153 per adult or $81 per child, another $81 for a single supplement. The big news for higher income Canadians, of course, is a complete rehaul of the alternative minimum tax known as the AMT. Starting 2024, the government being concerned that high income individuals are paying relatively little in personal income tax as a share of their income are going to be introducing this new rebranded AMT. It is expected that the AMT changes will generate an additional $3 billion in revenues over the next five years, and in fact, will affect and target primarily the highest income earners in Canada. The government did announce a number of changes to a variety of registered plans. The RESP, Education Savings Plan, they've made a slight change there to allow $8,000 instead of $5,000 in the first 13 consecutive weeks of enrollment in terms of an educational assistance payment. And they've also amended the requirement when you open up an RESP, a joint RESP, currently you have to have spouses or common law partners, the new budget proposes to allow a divorced or separated couple to open an RESP as a joint subscribers for one or more of their children. There's also a small change to registered disability savings plans. Under the current rules, there is an issue if you have someone who is a child over the age of 18, but they don't have the mental capacity to be able to enter into a contract. A parent or a spouse or partner is permitted to open up the RDSP for them as opposed to just trying to get a guardian or legal representative. And they've also expanded the definition of a qualifying member to also include a brother or a sister of the beneficiary who's at least 18 years of age to allow a sibling to establish an RDSP for an adult with a disability doesn't have the capacity to enter into their own RDSP contract. A few quick changes for corporations. There was a bill a number of years ago to facilitate intergenerational share transfers that was built C-208. The government is just making a couple of changes there to make sure that people don't take advantage of that rule inappropriate. There hasn't been a bona fide sale to a family member. They've also introduced legislation to facilitate employee ownership trusts, which have been popular both in the U.S. and the U.K. as a way of allowing a corporation to transition to some of the key employees of the business in future generations on a tax-effective basis. And then finally, there are some changes coming to the general anti-avoidance rule or the GAR to strengthen the GAR. A GAR basically is the rule that was introduced back in 1988 that effectively says that a tax benefit could be denied if the government deems it to be inappropriate. So the GAR will be amended to help address some various interpretive issues that the government is concerned about that the GAR is not currently applying as intended. This could include a GAR penalty equal to 25% of the amount of the benefit, as well as extending a reassessment period by three years for GAR assessment. <laughs>